Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Brixton in South London into Westminster. This route sticks to quiet back streets and protected cycle lanes and it still only takes around 20 minutes which is roughly how long it takes to cycle in down the main road as well. If you like this video or you find it useful then make sure you subscribe to the channel because I post more safe cycle routes across London on it every week. Alright let's get going. So we're starting outside Brixton Tube Station and we're going to head straight down Electric Avenue, that's the Market Street here. During the day this is actually a pedestrians only street, in fact uh, you might have noticed that one of the market attendants was telling off that van for being there, it shouldn't be there during the day. And uh, you probably don't really want to ride down here because it's quite busy so you could just push your bike or you know if you're feeling adventurous you can probably just weave around people. But this is a really busy pedestrian space so you know make sure you're courteous to people and give pedestrians priority when they need to go and yes this is the electric avenue of the song and it's so known because it's supposedly the first market street to have been lit by electric light at the end of electric avenue just keep going straight and go right down past the recreation center on the left and box park on your right this street is also quiet as well um, it's part of pope's road and it does have parking on it, so do watch out for people backing in and things like that. At the end of this street, you turn right, uh, right past where they park all the police vans near the police station on the Canterbury Crescent. And then you follow that through onto these residential streets. The first part of this ride is really about shadowing Brixton Road. So we're just to the east of Brixton Road, which is running on our left. And we're really just picking our way through residential streets. And this is a much nicer ride than going down the main road, which can be a little bit hairy. Um, this isn't a low traffic neighbourhood that we're in at the moment, but generally the, the back streets are relatively quiet and there isn't too much of a problem with traffic. There are a few different ways to get through these streets and I think the one that we're following is probably the best. I've ridden this route quite a lot because I used to live in Brixton and I think this is probably the best way. Um, other people might have different views, so if you have a different idea of a different way to go that you think is better, then leave in the comments and let me know. We're just heading into the Five Waves Road Estate and one thing to watch out for here is that there are these little mini speed bumps on the road which are actually quite deadly for bikes. So there's one that we're just going over I think in a second now and oh there's a bit of a jolt. It doesn't look too jolty on this camera because the stabilisation is really good but trust me you don't want to be going over those at speed so yeah be careful. Now at this junction you're not allowed to go through so get off your bike and just cross that like a pedestrian and then rejoin the road here. You're now on Ackerman Road and this is very much the busiest road of the whole route. I actually don't think it's too bad but if you can manage this sort of traffic level then you should be fine. It's not going to get much worse than this. There is a road slightly later on called Foxley Road which has a similar level of traffic and uh, yeah generally they're not too bad but they're not quite the quiet back streets I aspire to. Unfortunately I don't think that there is really a better way. Now turn into this new build estate here onto Ithorn Road and just follow Ithorn Road all the way through the estate. Now there is a cycle path here on the left and unfortunately it's completely useless because there's just a curb separating it from the rest of the road so you can't actually get up without getting off your bike. Um, whoever designed that definitely needs to have another look at the layout because it's pretty bad. You do actually tend to get a lot of stuff like that when uh, housing developers are tasked with building transport infrastructure. They tend to build it in isolation and really just have no idea what they're doing compared to councils. So um, we've looped round and we're, we're actually slightly doubling back on ourselves here on Cancel Road. It would be better if there was a little cut through, um, but there isn't really one at the moment. And then come out here. Now this crossing here, this is fine, you can go out here, but if you were coming in the other direction, this is actually a banned turn. So the best thing to do is actually to get off your bike when you're coming in the other direction down here and cross that as a pedestrian and rejoin the road. Now this is Foxley Road that I was talking about earlier, this is probably the other busier one. And we're keeping it out on our left here. Turn off here for Cranmer Road. These streets here could actually really benefit from a low traffic neighbourhood. These motorists are using this street as a cut through to um, avoid the traffic lights on Camberwell New Road and around Oval. It's um, basically just a shortcut for them. And as a result it's not the nicest ride but it is only a short part of the ride so um, I wouldn't worry too much. I said earlier that we were shadowing Brixton Road and we're now crossing it and uh, we're going to take a slightly different direction. What we're doing now is we're basically avoiding the large junction around Oval Tube Station. If it helps you get your bearings at all, just coming up in front of us there, it, that church that's about to loom over the horizon, that's St Mark's Kennington. One interesting thing about that church is that it was actually bombed during World War II and it had to be rebuilt in 1949. Just coming up ahead of us we're about to cross another busy road. 
This is the A3, otherwise known as Clapham Road or Kennington Park Road, depending on exactly where you meet it, it changes name roughly around here. And we're going into Elias Place. Now, this is actually the first real low traffic neighbourhood that we have been in for the entire ride, and it's really good. You'll notice a real difference to the level of traffic immediately. So these planters here are one of the things that are keeping most traffic out. Um, they say that cycles can go through them, but bikes can't. And yeah, these streets would have been uh, just as sort of rat runny as the previous roads we were on. Motorists used to be able to use them as a shortcut, but they can't anymore because they've basically been um, had their access restricted from one end. So there's no through traffic in this area. And the result is great. I mean, you can really relax here compared to some of the earlier roads. It's a really nice place to ride and it's great for walking as well. You can see that there's just a lot more people out and about enjoying the street. So... Um, you come out here through this exit and we're actually right in front of Kennington Oval, that's the cricket ground there, and we're on this great cycle track here. I actually wish that this went all the way down, it would save us a lot of bother, but it doesn't. Unfortunately it's not perfect in the sense that there is a courier van just parked on it, that's a little bit annoying, um, hopefully you won't see that when you get here. And the big green glass building looming increasingly ahead of us, the MI6 building, is a sure sign that we're basically now arriving at Vauxhall. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can proceed from Vauxhall. I'm actually going to recommend that you turn off right here. So what you want to do is you want to wait for the lights here and then you want to cross the road at the Vauxhall Park Tavern and then this is all nicely set up for cycles but then go down Godding Street which is this little street here. This street has no through traffic on it because it's sealed off by the pedestrian crossing at the other end and what you want to do is you want to turn right at your earliest opportunity into Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. That's this uh, little park here. Um, you can actually get into the Pleasure Gardens by going on a bit of pavement around where you crossed the road earlier. But a viewer pointed this route out to me on an earlier video and I think it's much better. I tried it out. So thank you very much whoever suggested that. For a very little bit now, we're actually going to be following a TFL signposted route. It's called Quiet Way 5 or Q5. Um, there are signs on the road and on signposts. To be honest, though, we're really it's really just a straight line, so uh, you don't really need the signs to tell you which way to go. I really like this bit of London, actually. It's um, really central. I mean, it's, the River Thames is basically, you know, a few blocks to our left, but it feels really suburban and um, it's quite hidden away. You know, you could maybe work in an office just down the road from here and you probably wouldn't know it or you might have no reason to visit. For anybody interested in railways, by the way, that railway on the viaduct to our left there, that is the Southwest Main Line coming out of Waterloo, so it runs down to Portsmouth, Aldershot, Exeter, that sort of thing. There are also a bunch of businesses in the arches here, so do watch out for vans and lorries. Oh, and crucially, make sure you ignore that sign we just passed, because it seems to point in the wrong direction, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, you want to go into Ingram Close, which is the estate. And again here, we're still following the cycle route, but make sure you watch out for vans from the businesses. This junction here is set up a little bit weirdly. You can just treat it as a normal junction or you can join this little cycle path here. And that's what I've done here just to show you how it works. You have to wait for the lights here. To be honest, actually, I just recommend crossing it as a normal junction. Those lights take absolutely ages, which you may not have appreciated from the, uh, the bit there where I just cut out the weight. So we're on the nicely surfaced Hercules Road here. And we're going through a nice filter, which keeps it all nice and quiet and free of through traffic. And then we're actually looking out for a street in our left. Um, that's Lambeth North Tube Station looming ahead of us, by the way, near the Imperial War Museum. But we're not going there. We're turning left down Centaur Street, um, which I think is a reference to Hercules Road. Um, Centaur appearing in the Hercules story, as it does. And you can probably see there that this street really badly needs resurfacing. It's really bumpy. Then follow that through onto Royal Street. And uh, that's St. Thomas's Hospital right ahead of us. Uh, by the way, just a quick note, this street is too narrow to have this much parking on it it's really difficult to pass cars now coming out of here we want to join a cycle track so just cross that road if you want to you can use the pedestrian crossing there if you're uncomfortable with just crossing the road on a bike if you are finding this video useful or just enjoying watching it then do make sure you subscribe to the channel because i post more routes like it all across london every week now um it's important here to pay attention to the traffic lights and also the zebra crossings because a lot of patients will be coming out of St. Thomas's Hospital. Some of them may be less able to walk. So, you know, be extra, extra careful that you're not upsetting anybody who's coming out of there because they'll be in a vulnerable position and, you know, they'll be trying to get to the bus stop. Um, we're now on Westminster Bridge. There are plans to put proper segregated cycle lanes on here, but for now it's just a painted lane. 
it's a bit of a shame, but I actually don't think it's the end of the world for for us at the moment. It's you know it's okay. Um, it's wide enough that it doesn't really bother us. But then when we do get to the end of the bridge, we do get to a segregated cycle lane. So that's really nice. And this cycle lane will lead us right into Parliament Square. And this is our destination. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, you can download a live map of the route in the description of the video. There's a link below. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video if you really liked it. You can see from the map here that that was a pretty direct route. Um, it's certainly just as direct as taking the main roads, and as a result, that's why it only really took, uh, I think it's about 22 minutes was the time that I clocked there. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching, guys, and see you again next time.